Welcome to an SFB Addict video. SFB Addict here. It's uh, time to do an updated version for the Learn to Play. We used to have uh, version 2.4 of the Starfleet Battles Cadet module. Uh, this used hexes that were 64 pixels. And I've just redone an update to the module. And it's now version 2.5 and it uses hexes that are 100 pixels. Uh, what's the big deal about going from 64 pixels to 100? Well, this graphic on the left is 64 pixels, and this graphic on the right is 100 pixels. So, it's not that big of a difference in height, but it is a big difference in surface area. Now, in the 2.4 version and earlier, uh, there was a mixture of graphics. Some of them were PNG files, and there were a few SVG files. Now, the SVG files were much better looking, but the file sizes were huge. Um, so, in version 2.5, I was able to take the SVG images, convert them to a PNG, and they're almost as good in quality because of the increase in size. And by doing that, I was able to reduce the size of the module a whole 10 megabytes. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it was a 60 megabyte file, and it's been reduced down to 50. Um, in comparison to a lot of other modules, that's actually quite large. But anyway, let's uh, load up the module here. Now easier to play Vassal period on a multiple monitor setup. And it's definitely easier to play Starfleet Battles Cadet module with a multi-monitor setup and using a keyboard that has a number pad on it. Also, if you are using Windows 10, uh, you have a Java runtime environment automatically installed that is a Microsoft version JRE. Uh, it has issues with Vassal. You should probably uninstall it and install the latest Java JRE from Sun Systems. Okay, so here is the introductory page. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to look for a game online just like everybody else would. Now I am on a multiple monitor setup here, so my windows will open up across both monitors, so I'm just going to shrink them to the size of one monitor. Now I have a few windows that were already left open the last time I closed the module. You probably won't get them automatically opening up on yours. Okay, so this is where you land when you first come into the module. This is basically the generalized bullpen kind of thing. Anybody else that is logged in with the SFB Cadet module will be able to communicate with you here in the primary chat. Which is why you're not supposed to play games in the primary chat area. You're supposed to make a room. So here, this is the server control. It will turn the control windows off and on on the right hand side. So over here where it says new game, just make a room. Doesn't matter what you call it. And hit enter and now I'm in my own room. If you don't do this, you'll get a message saying uh, no playing games in the main room or the main bullpen or something along those lines. Okay, but we still don't have a map or anything. Well, here is where you can go new game and then select the map and then select all your counters, etc, etc, and set up, but for new player, you want to go to Scenarios, and the first three scenarios here, actually the first 12 scenarios, are already saved for you. So if you just click on the first scenario, Battle Drill, it will load. It will ask you to join a side. You don't have to. You can just simply click Finish. But normally here you would select which race or species you want to be. You can see you've got Federation, um, Klingon, Romulan, Tholian, 
a whole bunch of others you've never heard of, like the Wynn, uh, Paladin, um, the Lyran. Like, you've heard of Orion, they're here as well. Um, merchants are basically civilian merchants. We have Zintis. That's from the cartoon series. We have the Interstellar Concordium, Hydran, and we even have Gorn. Yes, the big lizards are in, indeed in this game. And then you have uh, Frax, again, another one you've never heard of. So I'm just going to leave that as Observer and click Finish. And it will load up the map. Now sometimes this window will be completely minimized to the bottom and you won't see the map. So you have to look for this little dotted divider and click, grab, drag it up. Okay, so I'm going to zoom out the map. So there's a bunch of charts here on the right side of the map. Your ship and some drones. So let me zoom back in. So here is your Federation Cadet Cruiser. And let's uh, zoom this into 100%. Okay. So what weapons do you have on your Federation ship? Well, you have two photons. B. You have a left side, phaser 1, you have a right side, phaser 1, and you have a phaser 1 that is FA, right here in the center. And then you have two phaser 3s, rear half, that are down here. So what is this FA, left side, right side, and rear half we're talking about? Well, those are what are called arcs. Little diagram down here at the bottom of the SSD. The SSD is the Starship data sheet display. And this little arrow here in this little hex grid is supposed to represent your ship. And the areas are labeled as left front, left, left rear, right front, right, and right rear. And those are firing arcs. And the FA arc is composed of LF plus RF. So over here to the right, this green area, FA, is the firing arc of the FA weapons. So it proceeds from the hex of the ship out to the left along this line and proceeds outward to infinity on the hex grid. And same thing on the other side, it's out that hex row along that line to infinity. And there are other arcs, for instance, RA is basically the rear arc, which is the inverse of a forward arc. Um, the individual ones here are done up in a little bit more detail, so a left arc here in blue, a right arc here in a sort of peach, uh, left front in purple, right rear in a sort of uh, beige yellow, right front here in yellow, and left rear in green. So it's an just to break down what all the arcs are. So right side is composed of the right front, right, and right rear. So it fires directly forward in front of the ship, directly behind the ship, and everything else in between on the right side. Okay, so those are your arcs. Now, there's other systems here on this SSD, but we're not going to need them for the first scenario. In the first scenario, all we're doing is we are maneuvering our ship, shooting down drones. And the drones in this scenario are going to be moving speed 8, as is our Federation ship, speed 8. And there are five drones. So let me open up here my Unit Lists button. I'm going to select uh, Units on Map 50%. I'm just going to make this window a little bit bigger. So as you can see, it takes everything that's on the map and reduces it by 50%. I'm just going to scroll down here. So here we have one, two, three, four, five drones, and one ship on the map. Now they're labeled as multi-access all races. What's that about? Well. These counters are designed to be accessible by all players, or no players, even just casual observers. 
Now there are other counters which are restricted access, which means if you log into Vassal Cadet Module as the Federation player, only you, the Federation player, can access the counters that are restricted access to the Federation player. And same thing if somebody else comes on as Klingon, only they have access to the Klingon counters. But for right now, in the first three scenarios, it doesn't matter, we're just going to use the multi-access ones. But where would you get the counters? Well, the counters are right here under this button that says counters and SSDs in green and yellow. And you just select counters, and then you have your selection of counters. There's three tabs here. There's a generic pieces tab, which has uh, some other stuff here. A terrain tab for things like asteroids, moons, planets, etc. And then you have your starship tab. And here you can see it's defaulted to the multi-axis all races. And there's multi-axis all races, drones, shuttles, etc. And there's a couple text SSD things and then some other stuff. And then you got your races down below. So if you as the Federation player want to access the restricted Federation counters, you would select Federation. And then you have a secondary drop down here. So you have access to the ship, a weapons tracking sheet, point of slip, point of turn, drone, shuttle, plasma, T-bomb, fighter, a, a cadet drone card, a shuttle card, a plasma card, a regular game drone card, and a mine card. You're not going to need all of that, but that's where they're at. And the ship itself, you can select it and hit Alt-N, and it'll rotate through various graphics. Okay, so let's close that, because we don't need anything there. And the place to get your SSDs, you click Starship Data Sheet, same place, it'll open a window. And again, here you've got two drop-downs. The first one lets you select Race. And the second one lets you select the specific ship. So here we have Federation CA, the full game version. And as you can see, the cadet version and the full game version are quite different. The cadet one is about half of the full game one, so it's cut in half. So instead of four photons, you have two photons. Instead of uh, six phaser ones up in the saucer, you've only got three. And instead of having two phaser ones in the rear, you've got two phaser threes in the rear. And then there are other SSDs here, like a Cadet Dreadnought, a Cadet Heavy Battle Cruiser, and even smaller ships like your Cadet Light Cruiser. But anyway, let's just deal with the one scenario we're at. Okay, so everything in this scenario is moving speed 8, including the Federation ship. Now how the game is played is impulses are called, and things that move on that impulse, move on the map, and then you go through an impulse procedure of things other than movement that can happen on that impulse are conducted. So this top chart here, basic impulse procedure, this happens in this order on each one of the, these eight impulses. So the procedure is basically impulse one is called, the ships move, seeing weapons move, if any of the seeking weapons hit and damage anything, that damage is resolved. If any ships that have seeking weapons wish to launch them, they can launch them. If ships that have direct fire weapons available to fire want to fire, they can then conduct that fire. They resolve any damage from that weapons fire, and that's the end of the impulse. And then the next impulse is called, and then you go through the sequence of play again. Now in this scenario, the only thing that's going to happen is move ships, move seeking weapons, and then firing direct fire weapons and resolving direct fire. So we could go through these steps, each and every one of them, but we really don't need to. Okay, so right now everything in this campaign, this scenario, not campaign, sorry, is moving speed 8. So let's just jump right into it and we'll call Impulse 1. So on Impulse 1, Everything moves, and according to this chart, ships move first. So let's go down here, and we will turn our ship to the right. Now I did that by hitting my number pad, number 9 key. 
So if you think of the number pad, number five key has your ship. The number eight key above number five would be for going forward. The number seven key would be for turning left. The number nine key would be for turning right. The number six key is for doing something called a side slip to the right. The number four key is for doing something called a side slip to the left. And the one, two, and three keys are for doing something called a high energy turn where you turn your ship around and start moving in the, the, uh, the reverse direction kind of thing. Um, but right now we're just going to be dealing with moving forward and turning. And uh, we'll probably use side slips and I'll show you what a side slip is when we get to it. Okay, so my ship has moved. Now I need to move each one of the drones. So I click the drone and then I can either use my mouse to drag it forward or I can click on another drone and I can hit the number 8 key on the number pad to move it or I can select another drone and I can right click and go down to the movement menu and I can select move forward. So you can see there's multiple ways of doing movement and then there's two drones left here at the very top so I'm just gonna highlight both of them by dragging and selecting both and then I'm just going to hit the number 8 key on my keyboard and move both of them at the same time. So that's how you can move all your counters on the map. Okay, so I don't want to have to be scrolling up and down here to move all these things, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out the map. see all five drones and the ship. Now instead of doing that I could have used my unit list window and I could have scrolled down to where my counters are and yes you can click and highlight an item in here and use the number pad to move or you can right click and use your menus. So if you've got multiple counters in one hex, you can use this list to select the specific one you want, grab it, and move it. But anyway, so that impulse one is done, and we did the move ships, and we did the move seeking weapons. And we are now at the point where we could conduct fire. But what is the range between the ship and the drone, and what are the weapons for firing? How do you do that? Okay, well, let's pull up the weapons charts here. That's under the button here that says drag and drop, and then weapons. And the weapons that we have on our ship are phaser one. We also have phaser threes. And the heavy weapon for the Federation is the photon torpedo. Now, let's go back to the phasers. So, the phaser 1 table has a die roll, 1 to 6, because we use a simple d6 for rolling our weapons, and then we have a range. So, phaser 1s can fire anywhere from range 0 out to range 75. But at range 51 to 75, that range bracket, only a roll of 1 will do damage for 1 point, and everything else misses. At range 26 to 50, rolls of 1 or 2 will do 1 point, everything else misses. At range 16 to 25, a roll of a 1 does 2 damage, a roll of a 2 does 1 damage, everything else misses. Now range 9 to 15 is where we start getting into some good statistics for hitting. 50% chance of hitting, so 9 to 15, a roll of a 1 will do 3 damage, a roll of a 2 will do 2 damage, and a roll of a 3 will do 1 damage. Everything else misses. And once we enter range 8, we have 5 out of 6 chances of hitting. And it ranges from 4 damage down to 1, and a 6 misses. At range 5, we're guaranteed to hit, and the damage will range from 5 down to 2. And as we get closer, to range 0, rolls of 1 increase in damage, so at range 0 a roll of 1 is 9, and a roll of 6 is 4. 
So at range 0, our worst roll, a 6 for 4 damage, is more damage than a roll of a 1 at range 9 to 15 for 3 damage. So the closer you are, the more damage you are going to do. So let me close this window. We've moved our units. Now, what is the range of the drone? How much does it take to kill a drone? Well, all the drones in this scenario take four points to kill. And what is the range? Well, let's go up here to our map tools, and we will select range slash line of sight. I'll click on the hex my ship is in, and I will hold the mouse, and I will drag can see it counts off the range. So this drone is range 6, this drone is range 8, this drone is range 5, 9, and 12. Okay, so at range 6, 6 to 8 bracket, a roll of a 6 misses, so a roll of a 5 does 1 damage, a roll of 4 does 2, a roll of a 2 and a 3 does 3, only the roll of a 1 will kill a drone. So it's really not that great of a roll. So we're going to want to wait until things get closer. Now what about the Photon Torpedo? Well, the Photon, let me open up this unit list again, this time I'm going to use 200%. That makes things in here bigger. I'm going to scroll down. phaser charts that I just put on. Okay, so there's the phaser 3 table. There's the phaser 1 table. And there's the photon table. Okay, so the photon torpedo table has a range count here. 0 out to range 30, so heavy weapons do not have the same long length that a phaser does, but they do more damage. So here, the photon cannot fire at range 0 or 1. The 2 hit roll equals not available. The 2 hit roll at range 2 is a 1 to 5. At range 3 to 4, it's 1 to 4 to hit. At range 5 to 8, it's 1 to 3 to hit. At range 9 to 12, it's 1 to 2. And 13 to 30, it's roll of 1. But if they hit at any of those ranges, the damage that it will do is 8 points. So at range 9 to 15, a phaser's maximum damage was 3. But at 9 to 12, the photon's damage is 8. So heavy weapons will do more damage at longer ranges. But they're more limited in range, and the rolls get worse. So right now we could fire a photon at those drones that were range 3 to 8, and we have like a 50% chance of hitting. But again, we have better roll odds at range 2, so we're not going to fire heavy weapons either. Okay, so everything is moved. We want to get rid of that toggle on the counter that says moved. So I'm going to go up here to this button that says CM. It stands for clear movement. I'm going to click it. So there, we've cleared all the movement on the counter, so we know everything has moved. Now we're going to go down here. We're going to click on Impulse 2. And you'll notice here in the chat area, it says Impulse 2, Speed 8, 7, 6, 5, and 4, Move. And then we would click basic impulse procedure, we will do move ships, and the ships will move, and then the next thing here in the procedure is move seeking weapons, and I'm just going to highlight all of the seeking weapons, and they're all just going to go forward. So the drones in this scenario are all always going to go directly forward, which means this drone is getting closer, this drone is getting closer, this drone is getting closer, this one is crossing my bow, and this one is either maintaining or, or getting farther away. At least for now. Okay, so here everything is moved. So we would uh, then 
proceed down to the fire stage on this chart. And since the ship has come up a little bit, I'm going to zoom in on the map a little. Okay, so we're done movement here. Again, we're not going to fire, so we're going to clear the movement. And then we're going to go to impulse 3. And again, speed 8's move. They're going to move every impulse in, during this entire uh, scenario. And again, it echoes to chat that speed 8's, 7's, and 6's move, and 3's. And then we would conduct our sequence of play, move ships, move weapons, then decide whether or not we're going to fire. So since that's going to be the same thing on every single impulse on this chart, we'll just go ahead and we'll remove this chart. We're not going to need to see that and do that every impulse, because it's pretty simple. It's move the ships, move the drones, decide whether or not we want to fire. Okay, so I'm going to just continue to move my ship forward here, and I'm going to move the drones forward again. And then I'm going to visually make sure that all of them have moved. They all have that little blue move thing on it. They have, so I'm going to clear it. And I'm going to zoom the map in a little bit more. And let me just readjust my window here. scroll bar is actually in the window. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to zoom a little bit more. And maybe a little bit more. There we go. Impulse 3, and there's the five drones, one, two, three, four, five. So the two closest drones are these two. So let's count the range. That's range 1, range 2, range 3. So when counting the range, I do not count the, the hex that my ship is in. I count the first hex in front of it, and I count the hex that the target is in. So it is range 1, 2, 3. Well, if we again look at our weapons charts, which are now off the map on the right-hand side, so I'm just going to open up this 100% window, and I'm going to keep it here. And I'm going to make it bigger. And I'm just going to scroll down for the weapons. Okay, at range 3, if we were to fire a weapon, everything would hit except for a 6. A 6 would still hit, it just would do 3 damage. And the other drone is at range 4. Again, rolls 1 to 4 would do 4 and kill the drone. 5 and 6 would still do damage, but they wouldn't miss. But again, we're still moving along. We still have 5 impulses left of the turn. We're getting closer, so we're going to hold our fire. So, impulse 4. Everything moves again. Again, ships move first. And then each of the drones move. So that moves there. That moves there. So notice we've gone from range uh, 3 to range 2 with this drone. And we've gone from range 4, and we're now at range 3 to this drone. And again, these three drones up here move as well. So let me just highlight them all. And boom. Okay. Visually confirming that everything has moved. I have removing the clear move toggle. So we're now at range two. Okay, well if I don't fire on this impulse and if I call movement, my ship is gonna go forward and this drone is gonna go to here. So it'll increase the range to range three. And this one will move down and my ship will go forward, it'll be range two. So this one's okay. It's going to be the same range, we're getting closer. This one's going to start getting farther away. So, what weapons can my ship fire at this drone? Well, I can fire my left side phaser 1, my FA phaser 1. In fact, this drone, the next time it moves, is going to leave the FA arc, because my FA arc is directly up this hex row and in between and then down
on this hex row. So that is FIARC. Now I do have my left side phaser 1, which fires directly forward through all these hexes and directly behind me. And then I've got these rear half phaser 3s, which can fire into this hex and into this hex, this hex and this hex. But they cannot fire into this hex, nor can they fire into this hex or this hex. So any of the hexes that are cut in half by that line, the rear half phasers can hit into. So my phaser 3s right now are not able to fire on that drone. My photons FA are my left side and FA phaser 1 are. My right side phaser 1 is not. Okay, so it's range 2. At range 2, if I roll a phaser 1, only a 6 will miss. Now, this is a solo game, but if you were playing against an opponent, at this point you would say that you have fire, so you can go up into the SOP steps button and you could select the fire button and it'll play a sound. Open the fire window. And then you can actually open the fire order window, which is uh, SOP orders. Oh, I still have to correct this. It says public private notes. That's what this button used to be called, pub prive. But anyway, click SOP orders. You'll notice it has public and private, and then something for scenario. That's why it was called public private. But anyway, the tab we're interested in is delayed. So here we would enter in our order. So this is turn one, impulse four, and it's fire stage. And we are going to fire our left side phaser one at drone four. Click OK. You'll notice it hasn't put anything in the chat area yet. Now when I click Save, it closes the window and it says player less has created a message. So if we go back in, we can then highlight the order. And there's a button over here that says Reveal. It's not checkmarked. So I'm going to click this button here that says Reveal and then click Save again. And now it says in chat that my message has been revealed. And my opponent at this point could go back in to the SOP orders, and then they could click on it because it's revealed. They would then be able to read it. Of course, you can save your opponent that trouble by copying it while you're in there, by highlighting it, hitting Control C, and then in chat, hitting Control V to paste it, and hitting Enter. So, left side phaser one and drone four. And now that the order's been revealed, you can conduct it. So up here is the dice. So I'm going to select 1d6. It rolls a 2. So if I look at range 2, a roll of a 2, that is 6 damage. It only takes 4 to kill the drone. The drone is dead. Okay, so that's all I fired on that impulse. So let's proceed to the next impulse. So let me move my map back up a little bit. So there are now only four drones left on the map. Calling impulse five. Again, everything speed eight moves. So I'll move my ship. And I'll move these two drones. And I'll move these two drones. Okay. So this drone is maintaining distance with me. All the other drones are getting closer. This drone is about to start getting farther away. But if we have these rear half phaser threes, and that drone is about to get into a hex next time it moves that the phaser threes can fire into. So if I were to go to go forward, that would be range three. Well, range three with those weapons is a 50% chance of hitting, and none of it will do four damage. But if instead of going forward, I move into this hex here that is currently between the drone and my ship, the range will be 2. And at range 2, a roll of 1, 2, and 3 will kill the drone. And I have two of these weapons in my rear half, so I could fire both of them 
and the likelihood is that I'll kill the drone. So that's what I'm going to do. But that's next impulse. This impulse, this drone, is at a range of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and it's about to get farther away. Well, I currently have a 50% chance at range 5 with the Phaser 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire my Phaser 1, number 1, this one right here that is FA. Last turn we fired the left side, number 2, 1, here. So that one was fired last impulse. This one we're going to fire now. Clicking on the box like that is how you mark them as damaged, by the way. So we are again going to tell our opponent we're going to fire. So we would go into SOP, we would click fire, it would play that little script that we're going to fire. Then we click our thing here. And this time I'm going to move the window up a little bit. And I'm going to say turn one, impulse five, fire stage. I'm going to fire one, phaser one. So if they're still doing their orders, we wait for them to complete theirs, and they submit theirs. Then we both go back in. I highlight my new order. I click Reveal, click Save, and my opponent would do the same thing. And then we would both paste our order into chat and hit Enter. So I'm firing one phaser one at drone number two. So roll the die. Roll the one. And that again was at range 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that is 5 damage, so this drone dies. Okay, I'm going to remove the debris here from the map. Same thing with this debris. Okay, so that was everything that moved, and that was fire stage. So clear movement. And now we're going to call impulse 6. So this drone is going to move. This drone is going to move, and then this drone is going to move. But I should have moved my ship first, but that's okay. I'm now going to do what well, is called the side slip. So I'm going to click on my ship and hit the number pad number six, and I move sideways. Now, normally, what you would do is you would uh, go in and you would grab a point of slip, point of turn, and you would put the little S in that hex to indicate that that is a hex where you turned. Now, this drone, drone number three, is now within the rear half arc. So these two phaser threes, which are rear half, can now arc on this drone. So I'm going to fire both of these. We've previously fired that phaser one and that phaser one. So firing those two phaser threes at the drone. And that's drone number three. So this is turn one, impulse, six, and it is fire stage. We're going to fire two phaser threes at drone three. Highlight, copy, click OK. Now, since this is just a solo game, I'm just going to highlight that order again. I'm going to click reveal. Save. So it's going to both create it and reveal it at the same time. That's what you would do if you had fire orders and your opponent has told you they don't have fire orders, kind of thing. So there it is. There's the two phaser threes firing. So grabbing the die, selecting two d6. I rolled a three and a one. So at range two, a one does four, and a three does four. So I did eight damage to that drone, more than enough to kill it. So I'm just going to right-click, and instead of saying explodes, I'm just going to say delete. Okay, so that was all movement and fire. So let me scroll the map back up. Okay, so next impulse, 
plus 7. I got my photons left, and I got my right side phaser 1. So I'm going to turn my ship upwards. I'm going to grab my point of slip marker. I'm going to clone it. I'm going to double click to grab, to separate them, and grab the second one. I'm going to move that to the new hex. I'm going to hit Alt N to change the image, so it's now a point of turn marker. And then this drone's going to move, and that drone's going to move. Okay, so this is now impulse 7. The, this drone up here is range 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, well, we look at our photon table. Range 4 is a roll of 1 to 4 for 8 damage. Pretty good odds. And this drone is now in my right side arc at range 1. And the phaser 1 at range 1 is minimum damage of a 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call up the, the fire order. I'm going to type it in. This is turn 1, impulse 7, fire stage, 1, phaser 1, at drone 5, is an auto kill on the rolls, and I'm also going to fire 1 photon, A, and this is phaser 1 by the way, was 3, Instead of typing AT, you can just simply use the symbol. At drone 1. Copy it. Click OK. And reveal it as well, and save it. And paste it into the chat area. And I'm going to do the roll, so let's clear the, the movement since everything has moved. So this drone here is an automatic kill. So we're rolling one photon. Range 4, roll a 1 to 4 for 8 damage for an, a, a kill. So let's roll that. And I rolled a 2. And I succeeded. And that drone's dead. So during this turn, we used both my Phaser 1s, or Phaser 3s, these three Phaser 1s, and we used one photon. So if that photon had missed next impulse, impulse 8, I would have tried using the other photon to take out that last row. And that was scenario one. Now, in this scenario, we really didn't get into doing an energy allocation, which is where you would right-click your SSD and select energy allocation, which would pull up this window, and you could fill in the information for your energy allocation. Now this is what's called a property sheet. Now these property sheets, if I click on the map, stay in front. They don't go to the back. But there's only one column here, so I have to use slashes to designate between turn one and turn two, and turn three if I took some damage, and turn four if I had taken some more damage, and it can get a little confusing, but at least this window doesn't go behind. Now, what I prefer to use is the show data method. So I hit that, it brings up a spreadsheet. And on turn two, I can just fill in what I have, and if I took damage, and on turn three, I have fewer warp, I can do that, and if on turn four, I had fewer warp still, etc. So on turn one, I can fill in the information for what I'm doing for that turn. So, but when I click on the map on this, the spreadsheet goes behind. And you'll basically have to do another show data to bring to the front. Some people find that annoying. That's why the other option is there. So since uh, scenario one has been completed, we can move on to scenario two. That's the next video. Have fun.